What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of Drive Talk Cars. If this is your first time checking out the channel. Welcome. And if you've been here before, welcome back. And if you like to learn how to do your own DIY, save some money on your own maintenance, mods, and other car related things, start now by clicking that subscribe button as well as that notification bell. That way you don't miss out on anything. All right, so in today's video, we are going to be continuing on from what we did in the first video. And if you haven't seen that, links are in the description as well as right here. So in the first video, we went over how to get access to the camshaft adjusters by removing the air filter box and the valve covers. So now we are at the point to where we can see the adjusters and we're going to see which adjuster is causing the rattling sound. And it could be just one adjuster, two, three, or all four. So we want to check it out first before ordering any parts. That way you know you have the right parts. So let's get started. All right, as you can see, we have removed the valve covers, exposing the camshaft adjusters here and here. And we have our timing cover in the front here. And what you wanna do is you want to remove the electrical connections from the solenoids. All right, so here are the connectors. You want to push the clip and just slide it down. It's one clip and there's the other clip that you want to disconnect. So with most harnesses, sometimes when you have a push down, it can be difficult. You don't want to go too hard in it and, and break something. So you might can use a little uh, something like a flathead screwdriver to tip this thing in the front, but I was able to use my nails. So that slides off. And one thing that you want to do before pulling both off is identify or mark which one is which. So what I'm gonna do is put a white dot on this, on the harness as well as the connector that it's connecting to. That way I know this goes with that and then the bottom one I'll leave alone. And I'm just using, it's a painter's marker, just a little paint, nothing major, just to identify the two. So as you can see, I have a mark right there and right there on the connector and on the um, connection. So once you disconnect the connectors, there is a bolt for the ground connection and you wanna unscrew that as well. So that way you can have everything off and you can remove the timing cover. So we have a area here and here that we can put something around a wrench. So I have a adjustable wrench. Uh, the size is 27. 0.5 but this is adjustable so I'm able to fine-tune it I think 27 should work but uh, this is all that I have so this is what I'm using but you want to make sure you have clean tools you don't want them to be dirty so you don't get any contamination in your engine so make sure you have clean tools so I'm going to use this bolt or area here the can on the camshaft to turn it now if I can turn it then we have a problem if I can't turn it then we in the clear it should be locked in place like that so you want to try it on the exhaust and the intake it can be a little bit of play very very minor play but those are good so I am very excited about that. These two on the passenger side have no play. So therefore I shouldn't have any issues with these. If I did have an issue, there would be play and that play in it is what's giving it the rattle sound when you start up. So let's move to the driver's side. All right, so we're on the driver's side and I'm gonna do the same thing. You have the section right here and right there to pull on it to see if it works use our wrench and we're going to pull to see if it has any movement oh. locked so this one is bad all right so just so you can see look here it's going to move that's not good. That means there is play in it. And that's what's causing the rattle when you start up is that movement. So in this current state now, there should be a pin in there that is blocking movement 
this movement here. That should be blocking that movement until you start the car on and then the oil fills this up and creates uh, pressure and then that pin moves out the way or adjusts accordingly and you don't get that on startup. Hopefully it makes more sense when I take it off and show you this. So let's get started on getting this off. So now that we know that this one's bad. All right, so the next part has to do with turning the engine to a 40 degree uh, mark on the crankshaft. So right there is where you would have to put a 27 millimeter socket on and turn the crankshaft clockwise. All right, so there is a marking right there that is on the pulley and you want to center that with a marking that's underneath your small uh it's a small pulley that your belt goes around and it has a line next to it and you can see it and you match those two up this is gonna be a little difficult to see but i'm gonna try my best to show you what i'm referring to all right so now i'm going to use my extendable ratchet as a breaker bar type thing to turn the crank shaft I have a 27 millimeter socket. This is kind of deep. If it's too deep, I have another one that's shorter. So let's see. All right, so if the crankshaft is too hard to turn, you may have a lot of compression on there. And one way to relieve that is to remove the spark plugs. Cause right now I currently have the spark plugs still installed and it's kind of hard to uh, turn. So I'm gonna uninstall the spark plugs and then see if that alleviates some of that compression and then I should be able to turn it a little bit easier. All right, so let's do that. All right, so I'm using a spark plug socket, of course, and I'm gonna get the spark plugs out. Now I already have a video showing how to do a spark plug chain. So if you wanna check that out now, I'll go more in detail in that video on actually how to do the spark plugs. For this video, I'm just gonna go through it. Okay, so now that we have the spark plugs out, it should be easier to rotate the engine now clockwise. And remember, we're trying to line up the 40 degree marker on your pulley with the marker that's on the engine block right behind the small pulley. Now, if you miss it, you have to go all the way around. So try not to miss it. All right, so I think we have it lined up here. Let's double check. So like I say, if you move the belt, it would be a lot easier, but I'm not removing the belt. All right, so we have the front plate here. Um, it is in German. So links here is for left. I remember it because L for left. And then N is intake i remember that because of the in for intake and os for exhaust so that's how i remember that and then on the back side it's the same it's reversed but it's the same words and then i, I don't know how to pronounce it but receipts receipts i remember the r for right so that's pretty much how i remember that so that's the front plate then you have this here this is the locking pin for the adjusters. This is the locking mechanism for the back of the crankshaft. That way you know that it's in the right position because if it's in the wrong position, these will not go in. If it's in the right, they go in and lock both intake and exhaust. And then this is for the front, it goes over the camshaft and locks it in place. And this is for when you remove it and, and install it. But we'll get into it further on in the next step. So now using the back locking mechanism, you put it behind, there's two slits on the back here. You put it behind there and then put it flush against the rail here and slide it in. 
If you can notice there, there is a difference. This is thinner than this part. Cause on your camshafts, for this particular bank, which is the driver bank, this one sticks out more so than the intake. So it has to be like this. So the thinner part is on this side and the thicker part is on this side. And it should be flush against in those slits. If not, then you're not top dead center and you will need to rotate. All right, so then you have the front plate and that goes right here on the front. And it slides over these two knuckles here. And if everything is good, it should fit just like that and go in no problem. You can bolt it in right here. If you have extra bolts, I think it used the M5 bolt and then you're good. So now your camshaft and your cam adjusters are locked in place. All right, so now we have to remove the bolts. Those black bolts there, there are five of them on the timing cover. First three, there's the fourth one, and then there's one behind this part here. I can't really get my camera in there. So there's five total for the front cover. All right, so using a T30 torque bit, we're going to remove those five bolts. All right, to provide a little bit more space, we're gonna remove this top part here from over the fan. There's a little wire that runs in here. Take that off, out the little clips. Then there's little, little clips right down below here. Pull it back, pull it back, then pull it forward and you're good. And this little tray is moved to give you a little bit more space. All right, so now we can get to the screws a lot better. I would say to my surprise, these are actually pretty loose. All right, so on the adjuster, there's actually two parts to this gears here. One is stationary, the other one is um, compressed. So it's kind of a backlash gear compensation mechanism. Basically, I believe it's so you don't wear the main gear down too much. So this compensates for it and adjust accordingly. This little, it's a little back thing. And I'll show you more once we get into the actual adjuster and open it up. But there's a locking mechanism right here in that hole. And that's what this tool right here is for. If you get the tool kit, which I highly suggest, then this comes with this little tool. And as you can see, it's got little teeth on there to fit inside the gears. And then this fits inside the hole. It's not threaded. So this slides up and down, and this goes in there, in the hole. And then on this side, it has gears, or the teeth fits into the gears. And then you just screw it down with this here, and that locks it in place. All right, now with the gears locked in place, you can slide your other tool over that to lock the camshafts. And now we can go ahead and remove the front timing cover. The ones at the bottom are pretty tight. I mean, you have the option to remove in all these hoses in front. I just kind of didn't want to. So I'm just doing it, I guess, the hard way. Got that one. And there's one more on the side here. The one down here in this bottom corner is going to be a pain to get. We got the front cover off. Put some paper towel down here below just for any drainage. All right, that wasn't too bad actually. So front plate is off. All right, so using the front, the bolts from the front plate, I just put them in here to secure the tool right there and down here at the bottom. And that way, when I turn here, it won't move out of the way. All right, so using a 18 millimeter socket, 
I'm going to loosen this bolt and take off the cam adjuster. It's off.